Fala galera, bom dia, tudo bem com vocês? Você já sabe que eu tô de férias, estou viajando, mas deixei uma série de entrevistas que eu fiz recentemente com vários traders de mercado. A primeira, a de hoje, começando agora aqui no Market Store Map, é com Alexander Helder, famoso, aí, conhecido no mercado, grande grafista, autor de vários livros. Uma entrevista bem legal, bem descontraída, deixo para vocês assistirem. Valeu! Fala galera, beleza com vocês? Começando uma nova série de um programa fantástico que a gente está bolando aqui, uma nova série de entrevistas, se chama Magos do Mercado. Cada dia eu vou trazer aqui pessoas importantes do mercado, que já trabalharam ou trabalham em instituições, instituições do mercado, são traders, caras vitoriosos, com sucesso na carreira de trader. Eu vou trazer para fazer entrevista, perguntar o que que cada um, como é, como é que cada um chegou até aqui, né? contar sua história, uma coisa descontraída mas que a gente possa traçar um perfil aí é, de como os principais traders são, é, de como os principais, qual, qual o principal background que esses caras criaram ao longo da vida, né, da carreira, e como fazer, transformar isso em bons resultados no mercado financeiro. E hoje, para começar, é, eu tenho o prazer enorme aqui de receber uma lenda aqui do mercado, autor de vários livros, enfim, o Dr. Alexander Helder está aqui conosco, thank you so much for for your time, for being us, with, with us here in Brazil. Pleasure being here. Yeah, thanks so much. Dr. Elder, first question that I want to ask you, how did you get this to, to the market? How, uh, how, what you did before and how you get here? You know, I, I've always been a very curious person. I'm curious about lots of things. Uh, and um, I came to America, uh, as you may have heard, I jumped the Soviet ship uh, and uh, Uh, there is a book, the KGB Wanted List. I'm in that book twice. <laughs> I had serious problems with the government. They had problems with me. So I came to America and uh, I, uh, I trained as a psychiatrist in, the, in Estonia, in my old country. And of course, I was going to repeat it here. But I got a very good friend, just accidentally met this guy who was, uh, uh, he was my father's age, uh, American. And... Uh, Uh, the guy was very nice to me. I think I ate dinner at his house maybe four or five times every week. Uh, I would come on a bicycle. I didn't have a car and spend time with him. And uh, I saw he had some books about uh, the stock market. I borrowed one of those books. I've read it. And I said, that's wonderful. No bosses, no employees. Uh, just uh, you, you just have to think and make decisions. I can think. And then a terrible thing happened. I traded my first stock and I made money. Then another terrible thing happened. I traded second stock and made a little money again. And so I, that was easy. I realized that was easy. I got this delusion which new people get. It is easy. It is the hardest game in the world. And it took me many years to get rid of that delusion and to really learn what to do. Yeah, the, the thing about, about market is that Everybody wants to win, nobody wants to lose, right? So money is the commodity, is the, the, the rarest commodity in the world, in my opinion. Everybody wants it, so. In response to your question, it was completely accidental. Uh, I, I had no financial education. I came from, uh, from a communist country. Uh, uh, my friend loaned me this book and I thought it was an easy game. Just easy game, very hard game, but, uh, but, but it, it is a good game uh, and uh, It is the most interesting game in the world. I think it's more interesting than chess or cards or horse playing. And, uh, and if you play, if you do this game right, uh, you can be free. So now I live in the mountains uh, with my wife and two dogs. Uh, I look out of my window, I can see 20 kilometers to the mountains and there are no houses in, the, in between me uh, and the mountains. Uh, peaceful, quiet, I do whatever I want, I can fly anywhere I want to go, but I work every day. I wake up usually two hours before the market opens, I prepare my homework, I review my trades from yesterday, I study for today. It's an extremely focused and serious work, but the rewards are there, the rewards are there. Yeah, one, one thing that, uh, that I, I know that you do, that uh, I agree, I totally agree, is to, to record your, what you do, and in the future, you go there and, and, re, and, and, and re-watch what, what have I done 
why I did this and why I did that and why I lose money and why I, I make money. Why, what are the reasons? Losing money is a better teacher. Uh, when I make money, I feel, well, that's normal. I should be making money. But it's when market slaps me on the face and I lose money. That's when I think and that's when I learn and that's when I get better. Whenever I put in a trade, whenever anybody puts in a trade, a, a person who is serious about trading has two goals. One is to make money, of course. Sometimes works and sometimes doesn't work. But the second goal should work every time to become a better trader after this trade. So every trade is an educational experience. And if you're not learning from trading, people repeat the same mistakes year after year after year. And I can see people, you know, my, my past is in psychiatry. I see people making the same mistakes at 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. And they say, well, it's going to get better. No, it's not going to get better. If you don't learn, it will not get better. And the way to learn is to keep record. And uh, about your setup, I mean, part of the of part important part is to 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 watch what you have done, to to learn and everything. But uh, about your setup, your method, uh, you trade only technical analysis and that's it, or you put some fundamental analysis. A little, uh, both, both. But of course, I, I'm a technical trader for sure. Uh, I don't have the interest, I don't have the knowledge, I don't have the skills for fundamental analysis, but. Uh, I pay attention to what's going on, uh, what industry sectors are most uh, uh, interest, interesting in the economy, uh, technology or biotech uh, or uh, financial, mar financial firms. I always try to pay attention, what is, it, what is at the top of the market today? What is the most active? What is the most interesting? Then I use also a lot of contrary thinking. If something is at the very bottom, that's what I'm interested in buying. And what, if everything is at the very top, that's what I'm interested in selling short. Because the wheel always turns, always turns. And most people have this bizarre idea that what happened yesterday will happen today also. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Doesn't work. We talked a little bit earlier about the, what, about the next question, but uh, uh, for, 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 for the audience of the program, yeah. uh, for me, intuition. Uh, in my my kind of trade, I'm, I'm also a, a trader here in Brazil. Uh, in, from, intuition plays a big role, a big role in my in my technical analysis. Sometimes the graphics are telling me something, and and I don't do it because I don't agree with the doesn't graphics. Doesn't feel right. It yeah, doesn't, do, feel right. doesn't feel right. So I don't do it, or sometimes I go against it. So it's a uh, it's a little bit odd. I go against it with a small small positions most of the time, but I but I. If I don't feel right I, uh, about the graphic, I, I'll put some money against it. Yeah. Uh, how do you deal with your intuition and what you say to, to beginners? I would say to a beginner, you have no right to intuition. <laughs> if, you have, if, you have, if you have a feeling, it's probably because you ate something bad. <laughs> Lie down and wait until the feeling passes. Right? <laughs> you, to earn the right to intuition, you have to have a history of success, mm -hmm. a, a long history of success, not one year and not two, but you have multi-year history of success. You develop the right to intuition. Beginner? No. Yeah, that's, uh, that's why I told that my, my pro, I have a program here in Brazil every Monday morning, and I told this yeah, two weeks ago to the guys, don't, if you have intuition, Lie down, don't lie do down, it. lie down, and you're just not massage your stomach. And, and, no, you don't, you're not supposed because you don't have the time. The, the, no experience. No right? experience to, to do this. And, and not just experience, a record, a proven track record of successful trading for several years. Yeah, of course. Start developing into it. Other things, uh, what, kind, what markets do you feel better to trade? Did you change? Did you start trading in one market and then? In uh -huh. the very beginning. I did the idiot job. I was buying options. Uh -huh. I was buying options. Uh, now, uh, I have spoken, I have met, I have taught in classes, uh, maybe 10,000 people, maybe more. And, all, and I have not met one person who made money over a period of time buying options. 
my options. Yeah. Not a single person whom I met out of more than 10,000 made money. Everybody has a low, uh, lucky trade, uh -huh. but buying options is a losing game. So I began, I had no money, and I was, so I was buying options because I couldn't afford stocks. Uh -huh. Uh, then uh, I still couldn't afford stocks, but I traded futures because a little margin uh, can, uh, can get leverage. control position. Uh, then I switched to stocks. And then eventually the, the, uh, the, the circle got completed. I learned options, but now I write options. I don't buy them, I write them. Yeah, the, the, the options and the, were created to be sold, right? To, to, uh, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a head for your, 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 of your portfolio. Many years ago, uh, this woman came for a consultation with me. She was a floor trader on the Amex, on the American Exchange uh, in New York. Uh, she was an options specialist. Uh -huh. And she came for a consultation because she was pregnant and she wanted to get off the floor. So she came to learn about computerized trading. She said something to me that I never forgot to this day. Options, she said, are a hope business. You can buy hope or you can sell hope. I'm a professional, she said. I come to the floor in the morning. I look at what people are hoping for. I put price on that hope and sell it to them. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's a great, uh, for me, it's a great definition. That's nice. Let's sell hope and yeah. let's sell empty hopes. So when something is going, you know, option writing was fantastic a year ago when the market was going up and every idiot was in the market buying, buying, buying and options, people were, uh, option buying was just crazy and, uh, and, and, and I could get fantastic premiums for options. Now, the, now life has become uh, harder because the gamblers are gone, most of them. Yeah, bro. Uh, uh, <laughs> Probably. The, the, <laughs> it's supposed to happen. And, uh, and so now writing options has become much harder business, but it's a wonderful business. I, I, I love it. Of course, part of, of trading is, a, is your method. It's a setup, what you, what you do, what kind of analysis you do, your graphics are a fundamental, but it's not everything. So I get, I get an idea that something is interesting, something is not interesting. So uh, my operating procedure, my busiest time of the, of the week is a weekend. I run my scans. First, run automatic scans do not work. But what I do, but automatic scans help you find attractive, interesting picks. So I run my, I have three scans, I run three automatic scans, and that takes one minute, two minutes, and then I spend five, six hours uh, going through those stocks. It's very important to define what, uh, what is your trading universe. My trading universe is uh, 500 stocks that are in the S&P 500. I have a very good friend in Berlin, and he says he has a harem. Huh? A harem. Uh -huh. uh, and a harem is 200 stocks. Uh -huh. He slept with each of those stocks <laughs> in the past. And every weekend, he reviews his harem, and he selects eight or nine or ten that he will, uh, he'll, <laughs> he'll, he will maybe, maybe, maybe sleep, with sleep, him. sleep with him this week. So um, I have 500 S&P stocks, I run, a, uh, I run my scans, and then I have, so instead of 500 stocks, I have maybe 100 stocks that I come out attractive. And then I spend several hours analyzing. Yeah, I do almost the same, not with, uh, with stocks in the United States, I do this with the stocks here in Brazil, but Every, every Sunday night, I spend like five or six hours reviewing graphics, getting the, to see the open of the markets on Sunday yeah. night. That's yeah. nice to, yeah. to, have, to have color what's going on, what, ha what happened during the weekend. Uh, and when you do that, on the other side of the trade is the guy who woke up late in the morning. Yeah. He turned on the computer at 10 o'clock and he says, what's good? Yeah. So him this against one's you. Gonna, this guy is going to pay me. That's right. That's it's like right. poker. That's right. Uh, right? It's, it's... You have to be prepared. Yeah, it's not too smart to do and this. And you have to be cold also. Uh, you have to be cold. You cannot be excited about these things. Yeah. It's hard to, 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 to keep your feelings away, right, of, uh, of the trading. But uh, you have to do it. So, so technical, te the technical part is very important. I agree with you to have a a great method that you tested over time, that you, very, you, get very, you get very confident with this. 
that you make money if you do it in the right manner. Uh, but what other characteristics uh, do you believe that a good trade must have? Well, uh, my whole sort of principle is that successful trading is based on three M's. Mind, psychology, method, technology, and money, risk control. So, uh, for example, every day before I trade, I sort of take my temperature, take my pulse. Uh, uh, takes me 30 seconds, but I have five questions that I ask myself. Am I, am I prepared? Am I in a good mood? Uh, is my health okay? Uh, because if you have a toothache, you shouldn't be looking at the screen, you should be calling your dentist. Yeah. So, uh, uh, I basically, I review where I stand. And then, uh, and then I have a list from the weekend uh, on Monday. During the week, I usually begin working. Uh, American markets open at uh, 9.30 in the morning, stock market. Uh, I usually begin working around 7.30, maybe 8. And so I spent an hour and a half, two hours before the market, reviewing my scans, uh, seeing the news, looking, looking what's happening, and, um, and, 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 and writing a plan, writing a plan. Uh, I think every, every trade requires three written numbers, have to be written, not in the head. Entry, target, and stop. If you don't have those three numbers, you're not. I had, I had two more, two more. I, I enter. I, I don't. I don't always enter. I don't, in fact, I never enter the whole position at the first time, at the first, at the first, at first deal. I enter half position or one third of position. I have price to to increase the position if the market goes goes against me, yeah. and also if the markets go on my on my, on my side. Uh, on my side, of course, it's much better. I, I'm creating a positive average. I'm, everything is nice. I'm, I'm, I have money, so it's nice, right? Uh, but I have prices to increase and price, of course, to stop. There's, there are some guys in the internet that's, that sell, sell, sell courses and makes money, makes money, in my opinion, uh, delusion, delusion in some guys, some other guys that are, no, you don't need to have stops. In Brazil, it's, it's, it's a kind of a fever that guys are selling a, a products in the internet, telling the, telling beginners in the market that they, they don't have to stop their own positions. It's it's amazing, right? I have a friend uh, uh, in America, in California, with a very famous uh, market personality. I will not say his name. Uh, this is the guy who destroyed every account that he traded. Uh, but he is very famous for his uh, teaching. <laughs> right? Being a good trader. Uh, and uh, uh, long time ago, maybe 20, 25 years ago, I went to his house. We were going, uh, we, we were going to go uh, spend some time in the desert together. Uh, and uh, he, 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 uh, he told me his, he destroyed his account, but his hedge fund was going to set him. Hedge fund people were going to set him up with a hedge fund, and. Uh, uh, and meanwhile, they gave him what he called was small money. Back then, it seemed like a lot, $100,000, just to, to trade while they were doing paperwork. I said, oh, good, good. Uh, so uh, are you trading anything? Yes, I have six markets. Uh, he was trading futures, uh, and I'm trading six markets. So uh, how much do you allocate to every market? He says, well, 100 divided into six, it's about $16,000. <laughs> so $16,000 to each market. What about reserve? No. What, what, where are your stops? And he said something to me, that another <coughs> thing that stayed with me for the rest of my life, to this day, real men don't use stops. Yeah. That's the, the, the uh, easiest way to, to, to break so, your account. So we, uh, uh, I said to him, listen, you have totally $100,000 total risk, he says, well, uh, uh, it's safe because those markets are not correlated. I'm trading Swiss franc and lumber. And uh, so, so if one goes up, the other goes down, they're not correlated. Uh, doing that is, you don't need stops. Mm -hmm. I said to him, maybe we better not go to the desert. There's no internet. Maybe we better stay here. No, no, no. He has total confidence. We went away for two days. Uh, we're coming back. All six markets are going against him. And I talked him into 
uh, getting six markets. Every, all six. I told him into getting rid of two. I went to the airport. A few days later, I called him. A week later, I called him up to thank him for a wonderful time. And he says to me, those hedge fund people, they're not gentlemen. So what happened? They're not taking my phone calls. I had to hold my mouth. If you lost 100,000 for me, I would not take your call. Yes, well, right. Either. About six months later, I go to Chicago. There was a big trading expo. And my friend is going uh, from table to table, showing everybody a stack of printouts, uh, actual printouts from the broker. He took $5,000, and in six months, he traded them to 90. Yeah. And I knew exactly what would happen. To trade five to 90 in six months, you have to take crazy risks. Yeah, of course. And you have uh, to, to get a lot of leverage. The show, uh, the show was in uh, November. So from May to November, he went from five to 90. In January, he was negative, zero, oh, below. Of course, yeah. it's, it's a lot of risk. Have, yeah, but uh, so, so people who say don't use stops, to me, it's uh, it's criminal. Yeah. For, for me as well. So, but it's nice for you to tell the, to tell the guys that uh, that real men don't real don't, do, don't, don't do this. Stops, yeah. Don't don't do this kind of stuff. Yeah. Right? It's not it's not yeah. that's not true. The guys that tell this kind of stuff, they're I crazy. repeat I repeat this thing all the time. My <laughs> wife says to me, uh, we're, we're driving a car, she says put on the seat belt. I say, real men don't use seat belts. <laughs> so anytime, anytime I do anything stupid, I say, real men <laughs> don't use seat belts. Yeah. yeah. But uh, you said you say that uh, you just, just just said that uh, uh, you have like 500 stocks that you look at, and uh, but how many positions do you have at the same time? I, you know, again, this is very personal. Uh, I have friends who do 20, 25 positions at a time. I find that if I do more than six positions at a time, open at the same time, I start getting a little no, vague. No, me too, me too. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so uh, I uh, sometimes when market is just crazy, opportunities are, you know, like a year ago, opportunities are crazy, I will have seven, eight positions maybe. But usually once I go to six, that's my maximum. Uh, simply because I feel, you know, it's like, I can have six children and I remember everybody's name. And if I have eight children, I say, hey, hey, what, 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 what's your name? Uh, uh, <laughs> you imagine know. if you have 20, 25. <laughs> I haven't tried that. Yeah, no, no. So for, for me, for me too, I, I, I keep small. The number of my positions are very small. One, two, three positions are the most I have at the same time. Yeah. I like having three or more because if you, if you tell me, here is the list of S&P 500 stocks, 500. You run your scan, it's now down to 90. If you tell me, choose one and trade it, I cannot promise that I will choose the best. Yeah. But if you tell me, find me three that will make money between them, I will find them. Yeah. So uh, uh, Maybe that one that you choose didn't perform. That's right. Yeah. right. It so, just happened to me now in the elections in Brazil. Yeah. It just happened. I believe the, the after the aftermath after the day after uh, the election in Brazil, uh, I, I believe that everybody that the market go, is going up. Either if either candidate won the election, if if it was Bolsonaro, it would be a huge, huge move. If it was Lula, it was it was going to going to be a um, it was going to be positive, but not that big. But it would be positive. And I and I make a uh, uh, and I start a position in Petrobras that it's our yeah yeah but, I made uh, money in Petrobras no I make the position Petrobras that was the only stock that went down <laughs> the only one yeah, I saw it yeah I saw it. so I I had a right call but I choose the the wrong horse so choose three horses is uh, much better yeah three horses you, you diminish you you, you you increase the chances that you that you make money in the long run, right? Yeah. What is the journey? Uh, I, I, we, we spoke the other day about it. I believe that 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 maybe it's it's hard to 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 resume what you're gonna what you're gonna say because it's very vast, right? If you start talking about the market, you can go anywhere. So, you know, uh, uh, I'm a book reader. Uh, I uh, even now I came here. Uh, and uh, uh, and I'm reading two books, uh, one uh, uh, on my iPad and one audio book. Mm -hmm. I'm reading one book about bees because I have bees at my house. Mm -hmm. 
uh, and the other book about how, uh, how Europe recovered uh, from the Black Death in 1300, mm -hmm. right? So I'm, I'm reading all the time. So when I was learning to trade, I read every book there was to read. And the, now there is ma many more books, but back then it was possible to read them all. And not a single book gave me a complete answer. Some books say buy low, sell high. Some books say buy high, sell higher. And, uh, and so when I finally figured out what I was doing, I, I, I wrote sort of a manual for myself. And it included psychology, it included technology, it included risk control. And that's why my book became really the world bestseller. It is the best-selling trading book in the world. It's translated into 16 languages, soon to be 17. Uh, uh, but I wrote the book for myself. I never thought about success. I never heard about, thought about royalties and money and everything. Uh, I mean, I'm here because people read my book, right? I mean, so so the, book, the book gave me a lot of good. But I never thought about it when I was writing it. I was writing a manual for myself how I was five years earlier. And, uh, and so I wrote really the world's only complete book of uh, psychology, technology, risk control. And uh, yeah. gave so, birth to a child that I'm yeah, proud of. That's, that's nice. That, as you told, it's a bestseller. Uh, tomorrow, tomorrow here you see the, the guys doing an event here in Florianopolis. Uh, and Dr. Alex said, I you probably you see how, how most of people have read your books during, during, during their career, careers, mainly in the beginning of their careers. It's a book that uh, tells a story that helps the beginners, right? Uh, uh, a few years ago, I was invited to teach a, uh, uh, this, this brokerage company brought me to teach classes uh, in Asia. So the last class was in uh, Seoul, South Korea. And the class was finished at five o'clock and the plane to New York was at six. So I, uh, so I had to stay an extra day. I hired a driver. He went to DMZ, demilitarized zone. I come back to the hotel and I see the oldest Korean girls jumping up and down. So excited, young, like maybe teenagers, young twenties, jumping up and they're just excited, excited. A bus pulls up and these guys come out, get out of the bus, all tall, all blonde, all wearing uh, running suits, uh, Holland uh, soccer team. And I come home and I say to my wife, how come those girls jumping for that bus and nobody jumping for me? <laughs> and she says, you're writing for the wrong audience. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> Most guys, eh? yeah. lots of guys read, read their books. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, instead of girls, they were jumping out of their dresses there in front of the hotel. <laughs> But wife says I'm writing for their own audience. Yeah. I would like to thank you for your time again. Thank you very uh, much. Welcome to Brazil again. Thank uh, you. I hope you have well, a nice time and hope to see you in other events and other places Great. here. Thank you very much. Okay. Galera, esse foi o Dr. Alexander Eldo aí no nosso programa aqui no primeiro Magos do Mercado. Pô, espero que vocês tenham gostado da entrevista e a gente vai para as próximas. Música